Hi, this is Daryl from Cine Texture, and this is a quick video, one of the first that I'm calling uh, Devlog, highlighting some of the things that I'm adding to the Cinemotion tools going forward. So far, the feedback has been brilliant, and one of the things that I'm always doing is trying to find ways to improve it, both in terms of sort of usability and features, and also for people that are interested in Cinemotion, helping them understand how the tool works and how it can be customized and used in their own projects. One of the things I'm often asked is what do the cameras look like? And traditionally that's quite hard to showcase because I've had to point them to a directory of pre-rendered videos. And that's quite difficult in Windows or on a Mac to scroll through all of these cameras. And one of the advantages of being in a real-time context is that you can customize the motion in terms of the influence and the weight and the speed, but also the framing, so the camera lens and the focus and things like that. So that customization doesn't really come across in videos. So I've decided to make this tool, which I'm calling Kit Room, which will be a free downloadable EXE, almost like a demo, but also a tool if you own Cinemotion to browse through the camera motion and get a better sense of all of the different types of motion layers. So this is where I'm currently at with the standalone app. I'm just gonna hit play. And you can see it's got a very simple interface. Uh, we've got a list here of all of the camera takes that come with the package. So you can click between these and then you get an instant preview of what the camera is doing. And one of the other things that I wanted to add here is the ability for you to customize the camera motion like you would in a sequencer. So you can play around with these cameras and get a sense of which one's working for your particular use case. So you can click through the cameras and you'll instantly get a preview of how they work. And you can also change the focal length. And there's also a focus thing as well. So let's just bring this into focus, something like that. So one of the things that is important to note with camera motion is it's very dependent on the lens that you're using. So if we use something quite gentle, so like breathing, for example, or actually the most gentle one in here is one that's called tight. So tight has the least amount of motion. And we've got the different smoothing levels. So smoothing zero is unfiltered. So it's got all of that high frequency jitter in, which makes it feel very handheld. Um, but you can use one of the pre-baked smoothing variations. So if I go to four, you can see a lot of that micro movement is taken out. So if we're on a wide uh, focal length, the motion is not very pronounced, but if you're using a longer lens, you can see that the uh, motion is, is much more obvious. So one of the things that's great about the customization in a real-time context is that we can customize the way that these template sequences are actually affecting our camera. So I can slow the speed down. Let's just go to tight again. I can make it run slower. So if you're doing a slow-mo sequence or if you just want to make it cinematic or even feel just a bit more like a steady cam, you can uh, customize the, the speed, which sort of has the influence of like it being a little bit more gentle. So you can do that. Or if you actually like the natural motion, you don't have to change the speed. You can actually just uh, affect the strength. So if I turn this off completely, you can see the camera's not moving. Uh, to the right, this is 100% influence of the camera take, or you can just reduce the strength, maybe like 25%. You can see it's much more gentle. And of course, you can do a combination of these two things as well. So this is a nice little tool just to quickly like audition a lot of the takes that you get with Cinemotion and get a real sense of how they're behaving. It's a very, very simple app. There's not a lot to it. This will be a free download, um, almost like a demo that I'll put on the Marketplace page, um, hopefully in the next few weeks. It's almost done. The only thing I want to add here currently is just showing the idle sequences. You also get a bunch of clips that I call framing moves and framing moves are almost like introduction shots or establishing shots. They're more bespoke than these ambient motion layers. So things like pans or tilt ups. So I'm going to add a tab up here, I think, to let you uh, switch between the two different types of cameras. So that's kind of it. Uh, I'm almost wrapped up on this. So I just wanted to make this video just to quickly showcase where I'm at currently with that. And then once this is done, uh, I'm also looking into different ways that Cinemotion can become, you know, even more easy to use. So I'm going to look into the recently added customizable sequencer tracks. So maybe I could move all of the Cinemotion uh, tools and customizations like weight and speed into one neat user interface uh, below the Cinemotion track in the sequencer. I also might add a few new camera layers. Um, I'm thinking about doing some impacts potentially. And also at some point I might think about making them truly loopable as well. 
um, but that's going to take a bit of reworking. Currently, they're long 30 second takes, which I think covers most of the shots you want to do. And you can also crossfade them really easily and make seamless loops directly within Sequencer. But I might just pre make some of that functionality in case it's useful. I'm also thinking about changing the download type. So currently it's what's called a complete project. So when you download it from the marketplace, you have to create a project file. And the reason that was is that it was really important when I released it back a year and a half ago that you watched the intro video because it was a little bit more complicated to add camera motion. Since then, Unreal have changed it. So we've got these template sequences and now it's super easy to browse and apply this camera motion. So I think I might change it from a complete project to an asset pack so that you can then just hit the add to project button which should make it a lot easier for people to add it to their projects without having to do the migration. So that's about it for this video. If you want to keep up to date with what I'm doing with Cinemotion, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, just keep an eye on the Cinemotion product page and there should be some new updates very soon.